All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of three minus eight is equal to zero. So how most people solve this equation is they add eight on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to eight. And then they take the cube root on both sides. So the cube root of x to the power of three is x and the cube root of eight is two. So then they get x equals two, which is a solution to this equation. But actually, there are more than one solution to this equation. So I'm going to rewrite my equation here, x to the power of 3 minus 8 equals 0. And now I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 to the power of 3. So I get x to the power of 3 minus 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 0. And then now I'm going to use the formula a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3 is equal to a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, this turns into x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. So now I get two equations. I get x minus 2 equals 0 and x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, I get x equals 2, which was a solution that we already got. But now see on top of this, we have a whole other equation with two more solutions because it's a quadratic equation. So to solve this, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So I get negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared, which is four, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is four, are all, all over two a, so two times one. And this turns into negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 16 over two, which is equal to negative two plus or minus negative 12 over two which is equal to negative two plus or minus 12 i over two, which is equal to negative one plus or minus six i. So these are the two more solutions to this equation. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of eight is equal to 25 squared. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of four times two is equal to 25 squared. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of four times two is equal to x to the power of four to the power of two, and this is equal to 25 squared. Now I'm gonna subtract 25 squared on both sides. So these two cancel out and I get x to the power of four to the power of two minus 25 to the power of two is equal to zero. And before we actually do this, I'm actually gonna take the square root on both sides so I can cancel these twos out. So I get x to the power of four minus 25 is equal to zero. Now from here, I'm gonna rewrite this as x squared to the power of two minus five squared is equal to zero. So now I can use the formula a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b on this. So this turns into x squared plus five times x squared minus five is equal to zero. So I get two equations, x squared plus five equals zero and x squared minus five equals zero. So for x squared minus five equals zero, I get x squared equals five. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to positive or negative square root of five. Now for x squared plus five equals zero, I can subtract five on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative five. If I take the square root, I get x is equal to the square root of negative five, which is equal to the square root of five i. So these are my four solutions to this equation. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the problem two to the power of 101 minus two to the power of 100. So to solve this problem, I'm gonna first start by rewriting two to the power of 101 as two to the power of 100 plus one.
Now, the reason I did that is because now I can use this property that states that if I have something from a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 100. Now from here, I can factor out 2 to the power of 100. So I get 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so I'm left with 2 to the power of 100 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back to the problem, I have 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. Now, before, I rewrote 101 as 100 plus 1, but how about I rewrite 100 as 101 minus 1? So now I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 minus 1. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100 and 1 plus negative 1. Now, if I use that property again, that states that a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And now if I factor out 2 to the power of 101, I get 2 to the power of 101 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times one half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. So that's the second method of solving this problem. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64. So the variable I want to find the value to in this equation is x. And for my solution, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 4 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 4 to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. However, m and n are interchangeable, meaning this can also be written as a to the power of n to the times m. Now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then a to the power of n times m, this should be equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So x to the power of x to the power of 4 to the power of 4. In this, I can think of x to the power of 4 as m and 4 as n. So this turns into x to the power of 4 to the power of x to the power of 4 is equal to 64 to the power of 4. Now 64 to the power of 4 I can rewrite as 8 squared to the power of 4, which turns into 8 to the power of 8. Now, if I have something from a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, x to the power of 4 is equal to 8. And to solve for x, I'm going to take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to positive or negative fourth root of 8.